Yo, what's up? Welcome to another video from the channel. I'm doing something a little different today. I thought, you know, Tubby, Bullpit, and Adam and I got a pretty good game. Uh, we, we played our brains out, let's just say that, and I wanted to go through some of it and just react, analyze my own kind of gameplay type thing and see, you know, what I can learn and what I can do better from watching my own gameplay. You know, it's like kind of like, you know, if I'm a pro sports person, I played baseball, you want to watch watch yourself on video, it helps you get better because you can see the things that you didn't see in the moment. So there's also some pretty great strategic plays in this one that uh, I wanted to talk through because you might miss if you if you didn't get the subtlety of the genius, all right? Anyway, so starting out here, we're getting recons. Yes, we're getting recons. If you don't understand by now that recons are the most OP thing in the game, then you're way behind the times, buddy. It literally tells you where to go, where you can kill people the easiest. If you know what people are going to do before they're going to do it, it gives you kind of an advantage. You can see why. So it's kind of OP. <clears throat> so we're just getting a few recons done, trying to see where this circle's going to go exactly. That way we can know where we have to go. That way we know where everyone else is going to have to go. Um, so yeah, uh, Tubby and I just did that recon. I think Adam and Ballpit are about to go grab another one. So we're kind of split 2-2 two, two here, or 2-1-1 two, one, one it looks like. Um, so And the circle, the reason we landed here is because... I don't know if you saw that, but that circle was all the way... It cut off the entire northern part of the map, like Mill Base and Dam, like... And the, the flight path was right below Dam and Mill Base. So it was kind of a crappy circle because the circle was on one side and the flight path was on the other side, which means that the player base is going to be kind of still in the middle of the map. <clears throat> so in general, I try to land somewhere outside the circle as far away from the flight path as possible. And the simple reason for that is because that's where the least amount of people are going to go. And I'm not afraid to fight teams, but you never know if someone's going to pick up a far and you're going to get a Milano. You know, like you could drop super every time. And hey, if I drop super and I get a far, a green far every single time and everyone else gets a Milano, hey, I'll drop super every day. I have no problem with that. Um, but given the RNG of the Battle Royale nature, I prefer to get my loadout before I fight people. It's just a safer play. You know, there's, there's, when I have my loadout, my chances of winning the gunfight go up exponentially. All right. So also, also there's, there's better things for me to be doing than, than getting into useless gunfights at the start of the game. If I'm, if I'm playing that way, you know, I'll, I'll land it super, but we're trying to win the game. So this is kind of is kind of what you had to do. So I, I want to land where there's no people. That way, that way, if we do split like this, so you can see we're pretty much all in different places on the mini map. Um, we won't get in too much trouble if we're split because there's not many people here. We pretty much have the entirety of dam and mill base to ourselves, which is perfect because that means I can just go run into buildings, grab all the money. And as you can see, we're pretty stacked right now. We don't have a million dollars, but I've got enough for loadout. We've all got enough for self-res, which we don't need. Two of us don't need it. So we're going to end up getting boxes and streaks pretty early on. You can see the first circle has not even moved in yet, and we're already getting loadout. That is the way it should be pretty much every time that you play. So this is working out very well for us. Um... I'm I'm actually surprised that not more people went here because of the proximity of the flight path, which is right over where we are right now, thereabouts at least. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, anyway, you can see where that first circle is going to collapse. It's way out there. So we 
are going to buy loadout and everything we can right now. The first thing that you should buy is obviously your loadout. And then after that, everyone should get self res. And after that, everyone should get either boxes or streaks. I, I can't really decide which one's more important at this point. I think they're pretty equal. But yeah, you need them all. So at, at this point, I kind of forgot that they didn't have a heli. I, I thought that they had a heli for some reason. I'm just used to everybody having a heli, I guess. Um, so I kind of flew off without them towards the recon. And I, I don't remember that they don't have a heli until I think Tubby tells me. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, I got to drink some cold coffee. I don't have Corona. I'm just saying. Just so you know, I'm good. Um, right, so I'm flying over, and, and we didn't get a UAV. Normally, if you're going to go into a new location, you should buy a UAV and pop it, just so you know what you're getting yourself into, because most of the time that we die, it's because there's a team somewhere that we didn't know was there. I am pretty confident in our skill to be able to take a team head-on most of the time, but... You can never tell when someone's camping a corner. So get a UAV and then go for your recon, especially if it's in some place like downtown or, or farmland. Oh, don't even get me started about farmland. But we didn't this time because we were fairly confident no one was here. We had not had much action the entire first circle and nobody landed here. So we were pretty confident it was a safe buy. But even so, I, I flew over police and around. I Don't just go straight there, you know. Don't just let them know exactly where you're going. Um, bait it out. Let yourself get shot a little bit. Don't die, you know. Like, have a have a plan to duck into cover. But I flew around a little bit so I could bait, bait the shots out, know if anyone was there or anyone who was brave enough to shoot at the heli anyway. So then I went back to that buy to get a streak because I saw the circle. Look where we're going. There's no cover up there. We have to go and hold that high hill up there. <clears throat> there's no cover, and if we get in a bad spot, there's nothing we can do. There's there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. So if a team knows what it's doing, they can easily push us. <clears throat> you know, because especially if they have streaks, which you'll see later. It was it was a Michael Bay movie, pretty much. I stole that from a Twitch chat, actually. Whoever said that, you're a genius. Um, yeah, but I went back to that buy that we got the loadout at just a tidbit here because we already knew it was safe one because we we just came from there which doesn't mean that there can't be someone there you there can be someone rotating into that by right as you leave it but i was fairly confident no one was there because the circle was literally on it so if anyone was there they're dumb and i will take that chance knowing that the cod community you know sometimes not the super super brightest no offense because i'm one of them but I was willing to take the chance that no one would be there. Anyway, <clears throat> and plus, I, I'd rather take the chance at that buy that no one's there and get a streak there because I have a heli I can get away from the gas really fast uh, than to take the chance at some other buy where I literally have no idea what's going on. Okay, so we have to take the hill. I just now realized that I got here and they're back driving hundreds of meters away because they didn't have a heli. And uh, yeah, I just, I just kind of left them, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> so, the key to this circle, which we're talking about right now in game chat, which you can't hear, um, as you can see, there's no cover. But we have this ridge where we can look down on everyone, and as you can see what I'm doing right now, I'm in the heli for two reasons. One, um, I'm too lazy to go walk around. But most importantly, I can third-person peek everywhere around me at a 360-degree angle and see everything. If I'm on the ground, I can't see over that hill. But if I'm in the heli, I can see over the hill, but no one can shoot at me. So that is why most of the reason why I'm in the heli. Also, if you're in a vehicle, it's not on the minimap. If the person in proximity to you, close enough to see you on the minimap... Sorry, it's not on the tactical map. It's on the minimap, obviously. It, you know, everybody's seen a vehicle go by. It's in red. But uh, on the TAC map, you can't see a vehicle if someone's in it. So <clears throat> if someone opens their map, they won't be able to know that I'm there. Only if they're close to me, which they would probably know anyway, because there's a heli there. But e either way, it's mostly for the third-person peak aspect of this. So while I was doing that, 
the rest of my team, I was kind of go scout in the location, see if anyone was up there that we needed to push out, because I can I have a heli, I can easily escape most engagements. My The rest of my team was going and getting Berthas, because that is kind of the key to the end game here. Streaks and Berthas is what, is what wins you the game uh, in these open kind of hill circles. <clears throat> so... Uh, I shouldn't have gone with restock there. Oh my god, he just bend it like Beckham to that loadout right there with that Bertha. <clears throat> and don't don't pay attention to Ball Pit's driving right here. It's kind of embarrassing. Sorry, Ball Pit, but uh, you gotta stick to the stick to the walking probably. Leave the driving to the pros. He understands. <clears throat> so we've all got our second loadout. I should have gone Ghost because the main reason to go restock is the claymores. And if you're up in the hill like that, the claymores don't. Claymores don't do you too much good. <clears throat> Sorry, man. I don't know what's going on with my throat today. <clears throat> I got up like, I don't know, an hour ago. Still drinking my coffee. Still warming up the old vocal cords. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Ghost is better because you're off the minimap and off heartbeats. And the Claymores don't do me much good anyway. But it's not to say that restock has no value in circles like this because infinite stuns, well over the recharge rate, you know, is still pretty, um, pretty OP to have as many stuns as you need for every engagement, which is a large reason why I like restock. So I could have gone either way, but if I had to choose again, I probably would have gone ghost. Um, but it really doesn't matter in the end because we all have Berthas that we're in three peaking this whole hill. And if you just look at the map, you know, we're up here. Like, three Berthas don't just spawn up here for no reason. Like, there's people here if you see Berthas up in the hill. So, at this point, we've done... We've done enough recons where we know where we have to go. It really, like, at this point, you see the circle is kind of... Fire is in, the police station down there in that little town is in, and the hill's in, in that, in that last recon that we did. Um... <clears throat> On those circles, it's a 99% chance, basically, that it's going to pull hill, and we all know that. So we're not going to waste our time doing another recon to prove that, yeah, we need to be in the hill somewhere. Also, even if it does pull somewhere else, we still need to hold this location that we're holding now, because this gives us the opportunity to look down in every direction. And as you can see, <clears throat> so... This is a hard circle to hold if you don't know what you're doing. And it's hard even if you do know what you're doing, especially if the other teams are good, which you'll see later, they were pretty good. Um, but the key to this, I will tell you right now. So <clears throat> the tendency that most people would have when, when they go to hold a position like this is to get in that back little dip. Where's my mouse? Like back in here, you know, where no one can see you. Because <clears throat> it feels safe, you know, no one can shoot you unless they're right right on you and you can surprise anyone who comes over the ridge So that's that is a, an upside to being back there behind me where I'm looking right now behind me <clears throat> But the problem with that is is you have zero information So a team could be coming up the mountain. God, I keep looking around so frantically <clears throat> Why am I such an aware player man? So, so a team could be coming up where Ball Pit is. Team could be coming up there, you know, on the mini map. They could be coming up the edges on either side, which is what I would do if I was pushing this. You don't just go straight up the middle. You come up the side, so that way one area is blocked off. You don't have to worry about it. So we're holding the position here, not in the middle where we can't see anything. It's safe for the moment, yeah, but later... You don't know where anybody is. We'd rather be out sniping people as they come in and getting rid of them in the first place before there's a problem, right? So you can see Adam up there in the right-hand corner, the orange one. He's up in that side watching our right flank towards the northwest there so that if anyone comes up that mountain, we can see. And Ball Pit over here in the purple is looking at our, what is that, northeast? whatever that is, he's looking that way towards lumber <clears throat> to see if anyone will come up that way. That's a hard one to hold because there's trees are very thick there. It's real easy to get pushed without knowing it. You can actually throw some claymores there. I'd actually do that later. Ball Pit and I both put some claymores on a couple trees, you know, just in case because cars will hit them too if they're driving up. And Tubby and I are kind of watching the middle. We're kind of left center and right center field here. 
kind of watching for all those teams who are just kind of lollygagging around doing whatever. We can kind of snipe them as they come up the hill there. Um, so the twist with this game is that Tubby's got a work meeting in a few minutes and he cannot stay <clears throat> in the game with us. We knew this when we started that he would be leaving mid game. Uh, so we were prepared. We were mentally prepared to play low man and, uh, we have three Berthas, so we can handle the extra stress. So he's just throwing all his stuff down right now to get rid of it. So that when he leaves, we don't just lose our investment into his life and all his, his things. <clears throat> so anyway. So this is the strat right here. Adam came in to get the munitions box. He's going back up. So the thing you have to do with this is you cannot... You can't... It's good for information so this this is an information based kind of formation here that we have um but if one of us gets pushed hard we we the majority of our team needs to go and condense towards that person so right now if adam got pushed if he says yo i got a team coming up the hill on my side me and tubby at least are going to go over there and ball pit needs to pull back a little bit um, and if we can't handle it he needs to help us so that's a communication thing. It needs to be communicated early and often when... What, did I just use the freaking... What is that saying? That's like an HR thing, early and often. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean. So as soon as someone communicates they're being pushed, we all need to shift. It's like a zone defense, kind of. Um, like in basketball, if you ever played basketball. Uh, I'm sure there's other sports analogies. But anyway, you know what I mean. You got to help each other out. You can't just commit to this strat and stay like this. You got to be flexible and kind of absorb the attacks as they go along on either side, whatever side they come from. Everybody's got to be helping. So, uh, yeah, this circle is, is, is the reason I run the HDR right here. Um, I don't even know if I get many HDR kills this, this game, but... Um, yeah, because I can see pretty much everywhere. All the way to that blue building out there, all the way to Lumber. And I can take someone out before they can get even close. So before they know what's going on, uh, I can kill them. That's, you know what, that is the essence of of winning the Battle Royale. Especially in, in Warzone, when you have recons to do, that, like, they literally tell you exactly where to go to win the game. It's It's... It's kind of insane if you think about it, you know, all you have to do is spend a few seconds on a recon and you know where everyone is going. So the fact that we can predict kind of the entire way the, the game plays out uh, is OP for us, but it, anybody can do it, but nobody does it. People don't take advantage of all of the assets that they have and they expect to win just based on pure skill. You know, and some people can do that, but I am not one of those people. So I need to take advantage of everything that I can. Anyway, so we all, I think, have streaks at this point. I think I dropped my box if I had one. Tubby dropped his box. He's just going off out there to see if he can kill someone because he's he's going to leave anyway in a few minutes here. So we've got our formation we know that everyone's going to rotate into fire police station and all of them are really going to be coming out of lumber towards ball pit side. And I know that. So I'm about to go rotate over there to, to look with him because <clears throat> they're about to have no cover over there. Like the people on the police station where that King is right here and the, uh, the fire station, they're going to stay there. They're not going to push the hill unless they have to, because that's the way people play. But the people out of lumber, they're going to see, oh crap, there's no more buildings for us to hide in, so we're going to push up the hill. Unless they see us and they're too intimidated, which is possible. But either way, they're in, kind of in the open there. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Let's, let's, let's just fast forward a little bit. I've said all I wanted to say about this strat. I'm placing claymores. I'm going back up. Let's see what's happening. Tubby's in fire station right now. Who knows why? Who knows what he's doing? Um... Let's keep going, keep going. I'm standing on my truck. Tubby just died, which is fine. He was going to leave anyway. He knew that. So now we're a man down. And now it's even more important for us to do that condense thing that I was saying earlier, if someone gets pushed. So right now we're kind of debating, and I'm debating in my head as well, 
do we condense now? Because we know we're going to get pushed and we don't have really enough people to cover this entire distance that we're trying to control right here. We're trying to we're trying to control the entire top of this hill, obviously. That's best case scenario, that no one is allowed up here, and in final circle, we just kill everyone before they even get a chance to see us. Um, but the odds of that happening, with a, with a man down especially, are kind of low now, that everybody is rotating in, and there's still six other teams left. So I'm kind of just, whoa, <laughs> that loadout was close to ball pit struck. I'm kind of debating, hey, Tubby's back. Kind of debating, you know, do we pull back to Adam or does Adam pull back to us? Do we take center hill here and let them come up over that ridge where those loadouts are? I don't like the idea of them being able to come up that ridge uh, just because it puts us in more of a 50-50 gunfight where no one really has the advantage. They have cover, we have cover. It's trench warfare, right? That's why World War One sucks so much. So... I'm actually deciding, you know what, I'm going to stay here, have Ball Pit pull back to the middle, and just for information's sake, at least, you know, I have a berth I can pull out if I need to, but at least I'm there to see if anyone comes up the hill. Let's see, let's listen to some comms here. Let's see what we're saying. Gosh dang it. Ball Pit got down by a snipe. Getting airstruck. He's getting airstriked. I'm gonna go over to see if I can revive. Oh, are we gonna lose that Bertha? Toby died, it's okay, he left. Alright, I need to get this revived now and get it fast. I see that guy on my left. Shot up from over here. So he's my priority. I need to take finish cover. Ball Pit needs to finish his self res, which he does really? not do. I stunned that guy. So now it's just me and Adam. So right now, me and Adam are just trying to fin off oh this attack my God. here. What? He's right here. I need to cover him so he can get his self res. Nice. People don't do this there. often enough. I see so many teammates just let their teams die because they're afraid to shoot, or even if they can't get the kill, they're not shooting, you know? Like, you have to put suppressing fire so your team can revive. Even if you're not going to get the kill, you still need to put some bullets down range in their direction so that it either scares them off or at least distracts them, you know? People don't do they just let their teammates die. It boggles my mind. <clears throat> so right now I'm getting pushed, me and Adam are getting pushed from multiple angles, and I sent that airstrike just to give us some temporary relief from one team so we could focus the other team. Um, that's where, where the streak comes in. I am going to retreat back to Adam, I think, I think that's what I do. Oh, yeah, it's definitely what I'm going to do now. I was going to try and get my Bertha because I knew it was still full health, I and I don't know what Ball Pit's Bertha is like. So I'm taking Ball Pit's Bertha and going back towards Adam because he has cover up there. So now that we're two men down, the hold the hill scenario goes out the window. Now we need to get rid of one team at a time systematically. We, can, we cannot fend off attacks now. We don't have the manpower <clears throat> to do that. So right now, there's a team down the hill that I think we just finished. There's a team in front of me. There's that Bertha who's who's trying to run us over. So I just basically cluster my position because I'm like, oh god, this it's going down now. So if I cluster myself, at least anybody who's in our immediate vicinity cannot push us. I need to obviously not get killed by my own cluster, but you know, just don't get killed by your own cluster, okay? Um, so that was, you know, it, it worked out. We we were the cluster kept people from pushing our exact position, so we could be free to move and play. Uh, it killed that Bertha, I believe, and Adam was able to finish the team down the hill, and we're left with this lone guy. So shoot and move, you know. It, after this, anything can happen. Don't don't think it's a two v one. There's no One chance for him. Let's get lax. He could hit the greatest snipe of his life and get lucky. I'm just gonna try and get, keep him from getting. You know, hit. it's it, anything's possible. That's what I'm trying to say That's here. Nice. So job, I'm shooting guys. and moving. We're trying to pincer him. Adam's staying back day. there to cover yeah. him while I move up. That's tough. And I think if we didn't kill him, then I was gonna try to keep moving up towards the hill, team. stun over the hill, and go over the hill and finish him. But yeah, so that's how that game played out. It was a pretty good game. Adam and I did exactly what we needed to do in the last circle, which feels good. It's the best It's the best feeling when you win, and you did exactly what you needed to do, you know, at the right moment. Um, you won because you 
I think our target acquisition was really strong there. <clears throat> there, there are two scenarios where you win, basically. And the first is everything worked out in your favor and you did just didn't screw it up. And that is good, you know? That's a good feeling to win like that. Um, you're like, yeah, we, we took the opportunities we were given and we didn't screw up. This was one of those scenarios where we did have the opportunities in the first place. Um, but at the end there, we kind of had to make it happen and use our brains to do whatever we could to just force the win. And we did that. So I'm proud of that one. That was, those were some good plays, um, at the end there, especially. So there, I hope, I hope you learned something from that. It's good for me to go back and kind of, I don't know, analyze what we did to see what we did right, see what we did wrong. So. Yeah, stay tuned for more videos like this. I kind of enjoy it. Um, leave a comment. What do you think we should have done different? Anything that you would have done? Um, yeah. See you later.